This week, we get your take on the federal government's response to the Iran plane crash. Also, how do you feel about Prince Harry's decision to step back from the royal family? This and much more to come. I'm Glenn McGuinness, and this is Outburst. That's a good decision. I mean, I, I can't imagine living in the bubble that those people live in. I think it's a sign of the times. Cool that they're being like independent, doing their own thing, but it's also like breaking tradition, so. The British press is unforgiving. He needed to get away from that before it destroyed his family. For weeks now, there's been no shortage of media coverage concerning the decision of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle to distance themselves from the royals and all the duties that go along with it. Their intention is to become financially independent, take less senior roles in the royal family, and split their time between Canada and the UK. Prince Harry has indicated this decision will enable his family to live a more peaceful life away from the royal spotlight. So we took to the streets to see how you feel about it. Our question. How do you feel about Prince Harry's decision to step back from the royal family? What a shocker! I think that's good. He's an individual. I mean, yes, he's royalty, but he's an individual. Let him do what he should be, what he feels is right. Like, we shouldn't have a say in it. Um, I think if I were him, I would do the same thing. Um, I think that moving to Canada is an interesting choice, and I hope that we don't have to pay for it. I think it's his own decision and nobody else's. I mean, so what if they're royal, whatever? Not so what, but it's his own choice, his own decision. I think he's probably had too much pressure on his um, personal life by the press in the, in the UK. Yeah, Anybody would cr probably crack under that kind of pressure. He should, uh, yeah, it's good for his own mental health, uh, health and that of his family, so why not? Anything that he needs to do to pres preserve his family, why not? I don't know. Like, that's cool that they're being like independent doing their own thing but it's also like breaking tradition so yeah i don't know these are hard questions guys uh you know prince harry needs deserves the right to his own life he is what seventh in line to the throne he he and his wife should be allowed to live in privacy as long as we don't have to pay too much for it Sure, I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think it's his right to do it. There's nothing that, you know, makes him have to be a royal of any kind. If he wants to take away from that spotlight, good for him. He's trying to do it on his own. I mean, more uh, more respect for the guy to do that, for sure. If we are paying taxes for his security, that I don't, I don't like about that. But, I mean, if he wants to move to Canada, he's just like anybody else. Uh, I'm sure he's welcome here, just like anybody else. And he should just be just a regular human being. I think it was a long time coming. I think they don't really, um, he's not necessarily, he has ideas. He seems like a kind of guy who wants to do more and it's more of a ceremonial role. It's more of a just kind of lay back, don't take any opinion on anything, um, don't take any sides. And I think he just had enough. And obviously Meghan Markle comes in and she's very independent. And I, I think they just wanted to go do something on their own. I think it's fine. It's up to him to live his life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have any sympathy for the royals. I don't know. It seems like, uh, it's outdated now. We don't really need them. It's too costly. I think it's. I think he's doing the right thing. I think it's a sign of the times. I think that it's time to make decisions for ourselves personally, um, and he's entitled to that decision as a human being. That's a good decision. I mean, I, I can't imagine living in the bubble that those people live in. And sure, we all think that they're privileged, but life is life. It's being created right now as I speak. This is life. And they don't have the same opportunity as I have to speak to you people freely as I wish. They have to have certain security things and they've got paparazzi and oh geez, that's, that's a difficult life, you know, regardless of their wealth and that. It's a difficult life and I think it's a great decision that he's made. I feel that Prince Harry had no choice to step back, but this is one of these problems that we all know that we're faced with, and that racism shows its head every once in a while. And she took as much as she could take, and he stood up for the wife that he married. Uh, I'm disappointed. I think the whole thing's a schmozzle. Uh, I'm not sure who's you know responsible. Um, I'm sure everybody's got their fingerprints all over this. I don't think it was handled very well. 
uh, certainly could have been uh, managed better from within the family before it seemed to explode on the public stage. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm really not sure. I don't really care. <laughs> I, you know, he's welcome to come here. They are welcome to come here. I'm not sure I want to pick up any of the security tab. Uh, I don't think that's really our responsibility, but, uh, but anyway, they're welcome. Entirely his decision and good on him. I mean, he's uh, suffering from what happened to his mother. I mean, period. The, the British press is unforgiving. He needed to get away from that before it destroyed his family. I think the British royals are a waste of time. Frankly, I wish they'd go away. There are other royal families that are better. I think we should adopt the Swedish royal family, much cooler. One second's worth of discussion is a waste of time. I get it. I mean, I don't get it. I'm not famous, but I, I, I understand what they're doing completely. And, and I think good for them for recognizing, you know, what's toxic um, in their family and what they have to do to get away from that. And, I think they're doing it amicably, and fortunately for me, there's not a ton of gossip around it. So, um, good for them. Yeah. I kind of have a different opinion on that one. Ooh. I feel that um, it may have been done poorly, executed poorly, whatever the, the motivations. I think a lot of Harry in his history has spoken a lot about his mother and her struggles in the public eye. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with it, but I feel that maybe it could have been handled completely differently and I feel like that the Queen may have deserved a little bit of a different approach to all of this. On January 8th, a Ukrainian International Airlines flight crashed shortly after takeoff from Tehran Airport after it was hit with surface-to-air missiles fired by the Iranian government. 176 passengers and crew on board were killed, which included 57 Canadians and 29 permanent Canadian residents. The Iranian government has admitted a mistake in downing the flight. The federal government has offered families of victims $25,000 to cover expenses like funeral costs and travel. The Transportation Safety Board has also sent investigators over to Iran for answers. So, have we done enough? Our question. Are you satisfied with the federal government's response to the Iran plane crash? It's such an interesting question because you look at, you know, families die all the time, people die all the time, and you hear from us, some people, why don't we, you know, support these people? Um, but I think ultimately, yes, I am satisfied. It was an international crisis. Um, mistakes were made, not on our side in some cases, um, and, and I think it's really good of him to help these families in a time of desperate need. I'm not really sure what to think. It's, it's a complicated situation. Um, I don't think, you know, nothing can bring them back. So there's not really a good solution anyways. So, you know, at least they're doing something. It doesn't matter how much they give them. You can't really put money on um, someone's life. So, um, I mean, it's good that they've done something. I just can't tell you if that's uh, enough or if that's the right thing to do. Um, yes, I am, yeah. Um, I know that they aggressively want Iran to be full responsible for it so and I believe that they are I know that they're getting compensated for it so that is that's good yes very satisfied it's appropriate uh, it's going to be a long process where we don't have any justifiably diplomatic relations with that country but first and foremost we have to take care of Canadians and the government has made that a priority and that's a good move I don't know if money can uh uh, I don't know. Uh, you cannot compare life uh, with money, uh, but I I feel like the response been good. Uh, the way Trudeau has been uh, talking about and you know uh, all the attention he is giving to this uh, terrible incident, that's been good. Uh, I won't be able to comment about you know accepting twenty five thousand. Is it good or bad? Uh, there is no money cannot replace a life. No. Well, there's not a whole lot they can do. They're they're being proactive in terms of trying to get in there, and they got we've got officials there, people trying to sort things out. I guess so. Yeah, I have to say overall, yes. It's, it's an interesting one. I think uh, strictly on the idea that is this something we do all the time when somebody passes away over? I, I understand it's a very bad and it's a massive uh, undertaking, but um, I don't have a problem with it if it's something that is actually offered to anybody who passes away overseas or out of our country. Uh, if that's not the case, then it's something I think that would need to be looked at for sure.
On the whole, yes. I think uh, given the constraints uh, of the relationship between the government in Iran and uh, I don't I don't think that there's more that it could do I think it's done an incredible amount for the survivors of the people who died in the crash and in terms of uh, trying to negotiate with the Iran government I think uh, it's done what it could do so far I think they've done an okay job but going forward, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, dealing with certain nations, it's not just Iran, it's China, or Russia. I mean, uh, those are tough nations to deal with because you've got some pretty heavy-duty, egocentric people. So far, I, I think actually giving them the, uh, or giving the surviving members of the families some victim allowance right away is actually the best thing that they could possibly do because although they might be able to get money from Iran in the future, it could take years, I, I wish there was more that they can do, but I feel like they are genuinely trying their best to help the people who, are, who survived uh, the families who died in the plane crash. No. Why not? Because the response that they're using interferes with other countries. It needs to be about Canada and what we're willing to do to Iran or negotiate with Iran. We haven't to use France, the US, and Ukraine to do so. And each time we do that, it brings up a different topic. And that's the problem they are having in chambers right now. It's because of that. On balance, yes. In other words, first of all, this isn't the most important issue. I have colleagues and friends who are Iranians who migrated to Canada. Uh, their anger and their focus is entirely on the Iranian regime. They see the Canadian response as really a trivial part of this whole thing. I think, I don't know the, the, um, all of the details around whether or not Iran will release bodies. So there, there are elements that have nothing to do with the original uh, announcements or the uh, that, that may unfold that may cause people to be upset but to me in the great scheme of things this is not a big problem. No I'm not I think the immediate reaction of the Prime Minister was a little over the top um, I think he had a veiled uh, reference to the United States and the president and decisions taken by them uh, that I thought was inappropriate I still think are inappropriate I think there's a, a balance of responsibility for the entire affair but I don't think our federal government responded very well that said uh, I was pleased to see the initial twenty five thousand dollar fund set up or, or compensation it's actually not compensation but anyway the, that money helps I know those people that have uh, you know experienced this terrible tragedy uh, in the immediate term and so so that I was very glad that they uh, they undertook. I think they're doing as much as they can considering what they're up against, which is Iran. They're not giving, they're, they're being very slow and very uh, not as quick as they should be with their answers, but it seems that the federal government is asking the right questions. Who holds the distinction of being Canada's youngest prime minister? Joe Clark. Justin Trudeau, Stephen Harper. Going to go with Joe Clark. I think it's Justin Trudeau. Youngest. Yeah, Justin Trudeau. Yeah. I believe it's Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Joe Clark. It's Joe Clark. Okay. Very good. Okay, thanks. The Right Honourable Joe Clark holds the distinction of being Canada's youngest Prime Minister. Clark was 39 years old when he was sworn in as Canada's 16th Prime Minister on June 4, 1979, the day before his 40th birthday. Born in High River, Alberta, Clark was first elected as a Member of Parliament for Rocky Mountain in 1972. He ran for and won the leadership of the Progressive Conservative Party a few years later in 1976, replacing outgoing leader Robert Stanfield and unseated Pierre Trudeau as Prime Minister in the 1979 election with a minority government which lasted for approximately nine months. 
Clark was elected to the House of Commons eight times between 1972 and 2004. The Trudeau government has launched public consultations on how to respond to a court ruling which finds it unconstitutional to allow only those who are near death to seek medical assistance to end their suffering. So we sent our cameras out to ask Canadians their thoughts on this emotional issue. Our question. Where do you stand on the issue of medically assisted dying? I know that the Supreme Court has now landed the issue back in the lap of Parliament. There are some gaps and everybody knew that there would be gaps. Uh, there are required amendments. Uh, it's, a, it's a priority because these things don't wait. Uh, so I think the government is doing a good job making that a priority for Parliament in this sitting. If it becomes an issue of a person suffering and they still feel they have the faculties to make that decision, I would be for it. It's one thing to have a life, but to actually live and suffer through it, that's another thing. That's just really hard for a family and for that person. Oh, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm 100% for it. I think everybody has a choice in their life. I think as long as you have the right parameters in place. I work with people who actually, under that uh, scenario of that person, plan their own death right to the minute. I think it's. I think it's. You know. I think it's. As long as it's. As long as it's handled with care and with uh, responsibility, I don't think there's. I have no issue with that at all. Uh, I th think it's time has come for sure. Probably a little overdue, but I personally know somebody whose mother uh, chose to do that, and he said it was a very pleasant experience. It saved her a lot of grief in terms of uh, cancer uh, pain in the end, and he said it was very, very good. Depending upon what is non-functional okay if you have no hope of brain waves then yes if it's a mobility issue I can't I can't go with it I'd have to say no I am okay with the idea of medically assisted dying um, if that's something that you think is your only resort out. Uh, there needs to be obviously steps put in place to make sure that you're not just doing it because you're having a bad day, for sure. Um, but I think that if, if the right steps are put in place, I have no problem with it. I, on religious grounds, I probably would not support it in any way. But uh, what do I know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, people should probably... Um, yeah, it's neither here nor there. There, there are lots of uh, opinions and there are a lot of things that would prompt someone to want to take his life, medical conditions, but we live, we try to live and try to make the best of situations and, and um, hope, God, hope everything works out. The people who really, who raise religious issues uh, um, should have a say in the matter. I think it's entirely a personal one. And uh, as long as they're doing it when they are of sound mind, I think they should have the option to. That's a tough one. Um, I feel like it's it's hard to be very general, like to be a generalist in it, of, of a yes or no. I know it's probably a very liberal answer, but um, I watched something about somebody in particular wanting assisted suicide based on her having fibromyalgia and having been somebody who suffered from fibromyalgia and conquering that disease, I would I feel a little bit like where this is where the controversy comes in. I also understand that um, it is people's rights to, I feel that there's a right associated with permanent, like a lot of pain and suffering. So I'm empathetic towards that, but I'm a little bit wary of making it something that doesn't have very strict guidelines if it would become a legal thing um, based on some other cases that are a little bit more circumstantial. Generally I'm in favor of it. I think people should have the right to die the way they want to die subject to a number of you know ethical checks to make sure they're not unduly influenced. Uh, I'm generally in favor and against say traditional religious prohibitions or you know that that where religious institutions seek to control the framework within which people die. Medically assisted dying is a very, very serious conversation and families are going to have to kind of come together with a solution to help the government come up with a solution because a lot of families are divided and that leaves the government kind of vulnerable to making a decision 
that no one may not agree with, but we're placing it in their hand by not coming together as a family and making these decisions. I don't understand why it was ever an issue to, to craft some kind of legislation, uh, but I do sympathize with people trying to uh, improve the legislation because every time I read about it, there's always giant gaps where people can't get it. Um, and often it's because of not oversight, but just human error in, in the original legislation. And I see that they're trying to improve it. I actually haven't spent a whole lot of time thinking about the detail of it, although I'm getting old enough that maybe I should be, I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, I believe that people should be given the right or have the right and uh, be given uh, the help and assistance where necessary to die in a dignified way. I've never been affected by it. I don't know. I think it's really personal. I think it's a very, very personal decision. Obviously, the government has to have regulation and legislation about that, but um, I can't, I don't know. It's a tough one. It's kind of like suicide, though. Um, I think if someone, I think you have a choice to your life, but I don't think it's right to commit suicide. I think uh, if someone's in a real bad state and they're close to being dead or they're not able to live properly, then, yeah, in special circumstances, there, there could be situations where someone should be allowed to make that decision. I just haven't thought about it enough. Canada's reputation over the decades has been pretty good. Our military involvement in two world wars, Korea, Afghanistan, and beyond, has garnered some respect from nations worldwide. But in recent years, Canada's relationship with countries like the US, China, or even India has deteriorated. And during the last federal election, Justin Trudeau promised to fix Canada's image internationally. So where do you think we stand with this? Our question. What could Canada do to raise its profile on the world stage? Interesting question. Um, <laughs> Hmm, I think we could be leaders in things like the environment, mental health, because Canada is known to be really good for the environment, but a couple years back we were leading in deforestation, so it's kind of, you know, we have to keep true to who we are, you know, be kind citizens and take care of our, take care of our world, take care of our people. I think that's really important. Foreign aid is a huge one, and uh, our military. We kind of we kind of got to step up. We've been lagging for a lot of years, so I know it's going to cost us a little bit of money, uh, no, a lot of money actually. But the, those are two very important things. No, I think they do a pretty good job. I, do, I think we do a pretty good job as far as that's concerned. Um, no, we're a G8 country. No, we're good. Continue to do what it's doing, uh, filling in where there are now gaps in leadership, doing our absolute best to be moderate thinkers. Uh, be solution-oriented instead of revenge-oriented, uh, just doing what will keep the world in one place. I would say keep doing what it's doing. Uh, Canada has been long respected for a long time and hopefully we can continue to stay in that position. I think we just have to market ourselves better and be more bold. I think the United States does a better job than we do in terms of marketing ourselves. We have a lot of swag, we've got a lot of stature in terms of enterprise and business. We're very multicultural, we're very unique and I think we just need to be bolder about it. Invest more in its athletes. Okay. What, what do you mean by that? Because um, we're not visibly noticed on the uh, global stage mm -hmm. in the world of athletics, uh, other than hockey, which is played by a few countries. I think as soon as we can get this Huawei thing out of the way, I think it's very important. I think we have to distance ourselves somewhat from the U.S., like it or not. Uh, all our allies are breaking up over our neighbor and I think that's uh, something that we definitely have to address and I'd like to see Brexit done and see a lot more trade from Europe and Britain. Get a little more respect from the United States and China at the present moment. That would pretty much make me happy to see them do that. How would they go about doing that? Uh, demanding the uh, two prisoners in China be released immediately. Small population, small scale, uh, not a lot of leverage. Uh, very difficult. 
It's very, I mean, we, we tend to think that our impact is somehow greater or that we have some sort of moral standing, but we've lost a lot of that over the last 30 years. So I think it'll be really tough to do. I think we could hone in a little bit better on our environmental angle, maybe even do a bit better on the environment front. Um, do you have anything to add to that? I think the environment's a big one, especially, I mean, we work in within the financial space and yeah. there's a lot, that's a big topic of conversation. So even the connection the government is making towards what we're doing, I don't think that's showcased enough. So on the environmental phase, uh, stage as well, um, and just kind of the footprint that Canada has, I feel like we should be, offer a little bit more pride in some of the good things that we're doing on that stage. We can continue being uh, empathetic and compassionate and uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job as it is. I think a lot of people like us and want to come here because of the system that we've created here. I think we could stop using uh, a lot of the language that we have amongst ourselves in chambers to do so. I think that we need to come together and decide as a whole unit, whether you are liberal, conservative, or NDP, it's time to drop that and stand up for the country in which you live and you stand up for. Although I'm not generally in favor of uh, increasing the military, I do think that uh, Canada needs to have a bigger presence in the Arctic. Um, and uh, I think it needs to work more closely with the European community. Um, I would uh, think that it needs to diminish as much as possible any contact with, uh, or with China, but uh, with the Commonwealth, with the European community, with the rest of the Asian community, um, I think it needs to develop those ties and uh, with Latin America too, um, the U.S. is a difficult prospect. <laughs> we'll find a, a prime minister who actually is a good representative of the country. Um, I think we can be a, a lot uh, firmer, tougher. I'm glad to see that with respect to the situation uh, with our uh, relationship with China, uh, that we are standing firm on the rule of law. That's good to see. But I think we've been very wishy-washy in trying to please everybody for far too long, or at least for the last four years. So a change of administration would be a step in the right direction. That's all for this episode of Outburst on the Cable Public Affairs Channel. I'm Glenn McGuinness. If you have any comments or questions about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. It's your turn to speak up, and we're listening.